Welcome to Superheroes of Science. I'm Stephen. And I'm Sarah. We co-host Science from the Experts. Our guests are professionals doing cutting-edge science right now. They are experts in their field discussing what they know best. So listen up and learn real science from real people. Subscribe now and stay informed of our latest episodes and show your support. <laughs> Joining us today on Superheroes of Science, we're so excited to welcome Professor Raphael Lang with the Department of Physics and Astronomy here at Purdue University. And How's it going? Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks I for having me. I <laughs> think I know, I think we're talking about no solar eclipse or dark matter or both? So, something so, dark. My day job is to search for dark matter. I'm a dark matter <laughs> hunter. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you invited me to talk about the total solar eclipse, which yes. is coming up, so we could talk about that too. I mean, your pick. <laughs> <laughs> This, that, I want both. Uh, I do too. Let's talk about the solar eclipse. <laughs> right. Because it is coming up and uh, people heard about it. Yeah. But I'm not sure how much they know about it. Okay. And so it's, what's the solar eclipse? Why is it happening? Okay, you read and that. Who cares? Here. Sure, right. So total solar eclipse, no big deal. The uh, moon gets in between us and the sun and so it casts its shadow on us. Okay fine, so it gets a little bit dark. What's the big deal? You read that up, you look at the pictures in a, you know, of, of orbits and all that, and you can talk about all the great stuff about orbit, orbital dynamics, but what's the point? That's not the point of, of why we're excited about this. Total solar eclipse is an event that you need to, that's, the, that's really the bottom line. Here's my bottom line. A total solar eclipse is something, if you are in the path of totality, that you experience, as opposed to a partial solar eclipse, which you could see, you know, wherever you are, that's mm -hmm. really an easy thing. That a partial solar eclipse is something you see. A total solar eclipse is something you experience. And that is really the key that people need to understand to truly experience this event. It, you, would call, you could call it spiritual, you could call it life-changing, you could, it, it, will, it will be a profound experience, but to truly get it, you need to travel. You need to sit in a car or in a bus or get your classroom into the path of totality. The path of totality is a stretch which in the total solar eclipse in uh, April 8, 2024, it'll be some whatever 50 miles wide band that goes mm -hmm. once right across the United States. You need to be in that band to truly experience what is going to happen. How do we know that band? Oh, you just uh, trust the guys at NASA to know how to calculate orbital dynamics. The cool thing about the planetary system is that all these planets orbit around the sun since billions of years. They will continue to do that for billions of years, just like a clockwork. There's vacuum of outer space, so there's nothing to, you know, friction to slow stuff down. So it's just Newton's laws happening for, you know, billions of years. So we can calculate that with extreme precision. Truth be told, from now till you know when this is happening, chances are that this band will still be wobbling around the predictions by a few meters, but who cares, right? No, no, we can calculate it extremely precise. Well, good, it makes me a little more comfortable. <laughs> so you know that it. people know how to do that it. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, my, my backyard's in the path. Oh, wow. So I. Okay. I, I plan on staying home, but it's kind of closer to that edge. Oh, okay. So, so when I you're don't in the, know Right. So um, the closer you get to the center of the path of totality, mm -hmm. the longer the eclipse will take. You can imagine, right? If you're just at the very, very edge of it, you'll get a totality, and by the time you have the totality, it's over again immediately. So it, you might still want to, you know, walk uh, a little bit or take your bicycle a little bit closer to the path of totality. But, you know, in, in practice, it makes the difference between the totality for three minutes or for one minute. So it's still, anything is cool. I mean, I've traveled to a total solar eclipse to see it for 20 seconds, and it was still amazing. So, you know. Yeah. yeah. But uh, you said it's not special? The, the fact that a solar eclipse is happening isn't special? So a, a solar eclipse is happening almost twice a year somewhere on this planet. And um, you can see a solar eclipse, you know, on any continent every few years. Uh, you know, it's like the sun, you take those special eclipse shades. Do you have some here? Mm -hmm. You know, those, those mm -hmm. paper card things, the 20 cents a pop yeah. um, glasses and your shades and you look at the sun and it's like this cheese that got ate, uh, uh -huh. bitten a, a bite away. Uh, that, that, that's, you know, that, that happens every few years. But you wouldn't even notice that if nobody told you. Um, it doesn't get darker, you know, it's just something mm -hmm. you really need to look at the sun during that whatever hour and you will see that. Okay, fine. 
So that's, that's a solar eclipse when you're not in the path of totality. In the totality, again, it's drastically different. There's so much to see, um, so much to experience. Uh, it's, it's really quite an event. So what's the basic story? When the moon is in front of the sun, there's no direct sunlight coming anymore from the sun towards us, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have that situation every night when the sun sets just below the horizon. Mm -hmm. It doesn't immediately get pitch black dark because there's still all the reflection and the scattering of light in, that is happening in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it does get notably darker, yeah. and it does get even a little bit chilly, you know, you do mm -hmm. notice that, right? As soon as the sun sets, you go, oh, you get that shiver. The same thing is happening in the middle of the day, right? April 8, 2024 in Indiana, it'll be 3 p.m. <laughs> Can yeah. you imagine, right? So that's actually, uh, the first thing is just to notice that it's quite a drastic event. It's sunset at the middle of the day. And so nature will react like nature reacts during a sunset. Uh, birds will start or stop chirping, depending on what kind of birds they are. Um, uh, street lamps will turn on and off because mm -hmm. you know they are programmed to turn off, to turn on when it's getting dark. And so you get things like that. Yeah, I mean, your car drivers going like, "What's happening?" and making accidents if they don't know about oh, no. it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, all that, all that fun stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, other things that happening uh, during a totality that you can look out for if you're prepared is find yourself a tree and look at the shadows under the tree. Usually, you have seen that in your backyard, you know, there's little shadows everywhere and mm -hmm. they're dancing around mm -hmm. with the leaves, no big deal. But what is going to happen then is that the space in between the leaves will act like tiny pinhole cameras. And so you can actually get shadows on the ground where you can see the sun not being fully round anymore, but you can see it crescent-shaped. Oh. Um, so that's something to look out before and after the eclipse. Mm -hmm. The total event is going to last something like, what, two, three hours? Again, check, check the NASA on page for your details, right? It doesn't matter. If I tell you now, you, I, I, I forget, I forgot it, and if I tell you now, you'll forget it again anyway. It doesn't matter. It'll take a few hours, okay? So that's a nice event to have a chill afternoon, you know, bring your barbecue, bring your cooler, and have, have a good time. And watch, with the eclipse shades, watch the moon moving in front of the sun, which, by the way, is also in itself pretty cool, right? That we can see mm -hmm. celestial objects moving. Yeah. Right? I mean, so and then you go like, wait a moment, I see that every morning and every night when the sun is setting, right? Yeah. yeah, but it's a bit different, right? When the sun is setting, you see the Earth's rotation. Here, what you see is actually the moon the moving. Moon so that's a little bit different, right? It's not, it's not because of Earth's rotation. It's mm -hmm. really the moon moving in on its orbit. So that, that's kind of neat that you can, that you can watch that. Um, so, okay, so before and after the totality, you have an hour's time easily to look out for things like the shadows that are dancing um, and just observe, the, observe it getting darker. But then during totality, like the minutes, couple minutes before, couple minutes after, and the minutes off the totality, that is really, there's a lot of stuff happening at once. And so it makes a lot of sense to be prepared for what is going to happen. So. When, when it's happening, you're, you're not stressing out, right? You are relaxed, you know what's going to happen, you can enjoy the excitement of the, of the surroundings that you're mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, just, just experience that. So what is there? Um, first thing, before the totality actually happens, you want to take your shades off, right? Now you're like, oh, but isn't this safe? It's so unsafe to watch the sun. Okay, question. Have you looked in the sun? It hurts to look too much okay. at the sun. <laughs> but you have. I have. Are you blind? No, I'm not. Okay. Yeah. I, I probably have, yeah. I mean, come on, as a kid, we all have They looked. tell you not to, They so tell I did. you not to, yeah. and you look at it and you're like, eh, eh, eh. No. Pretty much every day. Yeah, yeah right, right, right. But look, I mean, we've all, I mean, we've all looked in the sun, yeah. come on, yes. let's, and we have not died from it, okay? And we've <laughs> not gone blind. So, <laughs> ugh. What you don't want to do, the thing that you don't want to do, is you don't want to stare into the sun for a very long time. Right. Um, what is happening is this, that there's the ultraviolet radiation from the sun that um, will actually damage your eyes and that, yes, will lead to permanent blindness. And yes, I actually did talk to our optometrist here on campus and uh, she was very clear. She said during the last uh, eclipse, you know, she had cases where people turned blind. Oh. And that's permanent. So, um, oh. yeah, you don't want to stare at the sun for a long time. Um, you're, uh, just listen to your body, right? You look at it and you go like, uh, you know, it's still too bright, you can't look at it yet, you look away, uh, right? Be, don't be dumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Good choices. Good. That's what you have the eclipse shades for. Okay. Good. Um, oh, uh, talking about eclipse shades, maybe also I should mention here, because it's the ultraviolet radiation, don't use home products. So um, some people use, you know, old school exposed film, 
Um, you don't want to do that. Welding goggles, mm, I wouldn't again, you know. Welding goggles are actually kind of okay-ish, but I still wouldn't. Just get those Eclipse shades. You can buy them now. Again, they cost nothing. They cost a dollar or less yeah. than a dollar. Just get some. They will. Be, I tell you right away, as, as it was the last time, they will be sold out weeks before the event, so order them now. Order a classroom set and order five more for all the people that are sitting around you and, you know, <laughs> eating that whatever sausage off your barbecue and, uh -huh. you know, having that drink and say, but forgot, okay. So just get a bunch of them and, and, and be be in the safe for that. Mm -hmm. But then what was going to happen, just as the sun is setting in the evening, you can look at, you know, this red ball of fire, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, that is something you can look at and it doesn't hurt your eyes. Same thing is happening during the totality. Once the, uh, once the moon really has covered most of the sun, it is getting notably darker. And at that point, take off your shades. I've talked, I've, ah, that felt so bad. I've talked to somebody that had the sh they, she was afraid and she would have the shades on during the entire totality. Okay. You don't see anything if you do that. So don't do that, right? Before the totality and, you know, whatever, I don't want to say a minute, but, you know, you, you it, it, again, yeah. you know, just, just mm -hmm. be reasonable before the totality. You want to take them off and then just be in the moment, enjoy and see what's happening. So the moon will move in front of the sun and the crescent will get, the crescent will get narrower and narrower, slimmer and slimmer. Mm -hmm. um, at some point, uh, you will get all kinds of colors in the sky, just like during sunset, uh -huh. right? The sky gets colorful. Same thing here. Um, when, uh, when most of the direct light is covered up from the direct shadow of the moon, it gets colorful. Uh, the entire environment gets a really weird, like, it, it's very unique. The colors, the colors are very unique during mm -hmm. just before and after an eclipse. It's, it's a little bit the colors from a sunset. Mm -hmm. But during day, so you get the colors from the sunset, but the shades are during, like you have them during the day. So for a photographer, it's like super weird. It's like, what's going on? It's eerie. Um, then what's going to happen is, as the moon is moving in front of the sun, um, it's covering the sun completely. But think about it, the moon is not a perfect sphere, right? The moon has craters. And so the rim of the moon is not a perfect circle, but it has dents and, you know, little mm -hmm. hills and little valleys mm -hmm. and, you know, craters. And so at some point there will be that one crater which will happen to be the one which lets sunlight through um, at, at the last moment still. And so essentially the entire sun is covered, but you get this ray of sun just peeking through that one crater. Uh -huh. Um, and that's just like a jeweler's box. It's the, called the diamond ring. It's when you, when you just have to, yeah, isn't that right? Because you have this <laughs> tiny line of uh -huh. the sun, but then there's still this more sunlight coming through there. Sometimes you get two, even if you have two craters, but usually it's one. Uh -huh. um, so that, that's really something pretty to look out for. Like, yeah. um, and then you have the moon covered the sun totally for a couple of minutes. Okay. So at that point, the direct sunlight is gone. And uh, now you get something, you get to see something that you will not be seeing, able to see any other way, and that's the sun's corona. So the sun is a ball of gas, right? Yeah. We can't walk on it. And so the question is, where does the sun start? With Earth, it's clear. Right here. Yeah. That's right, right? Yes. I mean, that, uh -huh. there's a surface that you can walk on. That's yeah. where Earth starts. Where does sun start? It's, it's all wishy-washy. It's like this ball of gas, and it's like, eh, right? Yeah. Eh. And so typically what we look at, what we see as the sun, you know, again, don't, don't, during sunset, right, um, that, that red ball, that's a chromosphere, chromos color, that's because that's colorful, that's what we see as the sun's surface. Um, but the chromosphere is completely covered. And so we see the next layer that goes, comes to the outside, and that's the corona. That's uh, um, part of the plasma of the sun. The entire sun is a ball of plasma, but it's also plasma out there, uh, which uh, for some very funky and, you know, lots of research is being done on that mm -hmm. reasons, um, being heated to very high uh, hot temperatures, millions of degrees, um, Celsius, Kelvin, whatever, doesn't mm -hmm. matter at this point, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Right>. whatever. <laughs> um, you have these super high temperatures in the corona, and you can see that, and it's just this, uh, just, you know, do a, uh, look at Wikipedia corona, right? It's this beautiful, filamenty, ghostly, um, yeah, uh, uh, stretches and, and, and fluffiness, and, mm -hmm. and you can see that. It's up there in the sky. It's, it's really quite something. Um, so that's the corona. Then other things to notice is your surroundings. This is the moment where you are experiencing a total eclipse as opposed to seeing a partial eclipse. Mm -hmm. You're going to experience not just the light being different, seeing the corona that you can't see elsewhere. 
but you're going to be in experiencing your environment, which is, if you are in a crowd, the crowd will go wild. I mean, I go wild every time. I'm like, ah, this is so cool, right? Um, if you are, you know, out in the dunes and and uh, nature will go like, what is going on, right? Animals will go like, what? Uh, birds will go like, beep, 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 beep. I mean, it's just like everybody will go crazy about what the is happening, right? Mm -hmm. So that's really something to to experience. And then, you know, after depending where you are, a couple minutes or so, uh, the moon will move again. You will, and then everything the the movie runs backwards. You'll again get this yeah. little jeweler's ring, uh -huh. um, and it'll become bright again. It'll turn warmer again. The sun will come out again, uh, and you again have another hour uh, of uh, of partial eclipse. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, once that is over, then you are looking at depending where you are. You're looking at you know four to five, six, maybe seven, eight hours of traffic jam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That does That's tend to fall on it. I didn't think about that part, but you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> most definitely. <laughs> you're thinking ahead. You got the vision. You're yeah. So, so the piece of advice is, if you're traveling, is I mean, consider. I mean, look, this is April 8, 2024. Uh -huh. The the time of the totality is known to the minute. You can book your vacation now. Okay. So be ahead <laughs> of your be ahead of your colleagues. Put in your vacation now. Uh -huh. Travel there wherever you want to be on Sunday. Okay. Travel back on Tuesday and just make it relaxed, right? Yeah. Um, That's excellent advice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, those are things with events like you don't think about. Uh, I mean, it's, that logistical, like yeah, making it. Yeah. It's like, hey, let's go watch this. Let's be really cool. Mm -hmm. Let's drive over there. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Another thing that you might want to look for if you say, okay, so say you are a teacher and you uh, you have a, a, a class to take care of. Yeah. Right. Okay, you take a bus and you're probably not going too far. You're going down to Indianapolis or anything that is easily accessible. Find some uh, basketball field uh, or baseball field and just, you know, set up camp there and, and your barbecue. Don't forget the barbecue and the cooler right. because it takes a few hours, right? You, you need to keep busy at some point. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, uh, maybe you are, you know, a bit more geeky and say, oh, you know, I want to go out camping and, you know, use that opportunity to experience nature. And maybe you are adding an extra level of geekiness and saying, wait a moment, this is April, this is the Midwest, who tells me what the weather is going to be like? Okay, so what you can do is you can go online and you look at the cloud cover map and what you find, of course, not surprisingly, so the total solar eclipse, right, it stretches from, you know, somewhere over the Gulf or whatever, then in Texas or something, right, all the way across to the East Coast. And of course, the further south, uh, what is that, south, east, west you go, uh -huh. the, the, the better the, the prospects of having an actual clear sky. Because, yeah. yes, newsflash, if there's clouds in a way, you don't see any of that, right, yeah. Uh, you'll still see it getting dark, but you don't see the actual fun stuff. Mm -hmm. so, so that does makes sense but maybe you don't want to travel that far or you don't get so much vacation or you have a class that you need to take out and you can't afford to take your class the class to Texas and so here you are in India in somewhere in Indiana again at this uh, baseball field you set up camp there you're having a good time and there's you know you get those puffy the Simpsons kind of clouds uh -huh. that you know those ones um, Cumulus, I think, is what they're called, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, you should smart ass here a bit more. Huh? <laughs> so you take the, <laughs> you get those clouds, and you go like, oh no, it's right in front of the sun. There's this big cloud. What do I do? No, quick, everybody, let's get in the car, bus, and drive. You know, don't. Relax. Here's what's happening. The moon is casting its shadow onto the earth. And so, as we experience, when the sun is setting just after sunset, it's getting chilly. Same thing is happening during an eclipse. It's getting chilly. What does that mean? You have a temperature gradient. Temperature gradient means you get wind. And what the wind miraculously most likely will do is it'll blow those clouds away. So if there's this cloud, I mean, of course, if you have a complete cloud coverage, bad luck, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. Um, but if you have those little puffy clouds and there's, you know, the blue sky peeking out here and there, my advice is don't stress out, just have a relaxed time, you know, lean back, enjoy the time, and chances are that as totality hits, just even just a minute or three before, uh, there will be a wind of breeze picking up from the shadow of the moon that will blow the clouds away. Hmm. Well, that's, that's encouraging. It, it is very encouraging. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> I really, I appreciate that advice because yeah. I, would, I would, the yeah, original, I'd say, Let's, everybody in the van now, yeah, right, we're, yeah, we're yeah, going to yeah. drive to the net yeah. in the traffic jam, right? We're going to get in the traffic jam and get someplace, but yeah, yeah just relax. Mm -hmm. just, oh. That'll be fine. 
questions. <laughs> Good planning advice. Yes, I love this. Good planning advice. <laughs> I like this. Well, cool. Thank you. Okay, more things. If you're a school teacher yes. and you're uh, working to get a classroom set of those eclipse shades, yes. you're going to be crazy worried because you have somewhere in the back of the mind, you have heard that during the last eclipse there were some fake uh, eclipse shades yes. that were sold, right? Yes. Uh, can you stop worry, please? I mean, if you buy them now, just, just buy them. It'll be fine. There are so many really big suppliers. Should I? No, I'm not naming them, but you'll have an easy time. You will yeah. really have an easy time. If you Google now, you'll have an easy time finding vendors that are very reputed and they will give you the classroom set for really no, buy, no, no price at all. I mean, heck, buy them for your entire school. Who mm -hmm. cares? It's 100 bucks and your entire school has the classes, right? Yeah, they That's were pretty advice. inexpensive. Yeah. We bought some for teachers that's coming to campus for a grant. So, yeah. yeah. It was doable. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, thank you. Yes. Sure. We, this was painless <laughs> and entertaining. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thank you for listening to this episode of Science from the Experts from Purdue University Superheroes of Science. If you like this episode, subscribe, give us a positive view, and share the love. Boiler up. Hammer down.